Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to use some Winsor & Newton, I thought we'd do some water colouring. And I've got my Winsor & Newton Cotman colours, water colours. <laughs> There's 40 colours I believe, so it took me a little while but I collected them all. And then I bought the little tray from um, Amazon. And I also made a, like a swatch on some watercolour paper of all the different colours. So I'm now going to use Winsor & Newton's, uh, it's their watercolour paper. I think it's a cold press paper. And I've just, I'm making a slimline card. So this panel measures, I believe, three and a half by eight and a quarter. Um, it's just slightly smaller than a, an A2 or the width of an A, um, not an A2, <laughs> an American eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. Um, and I've just put some water on there and I'm picking three colors that will work with my images, which I will show you in a bit. And this is super easy water coloring. I love how um, I can just take a bit of color and just a bit of water and just grab it and just chuck it on there. And however it kind of lands and however it dries, that's how that that's what I love about watercolor because it just it just does its own thing. And if you let it air dry, which I did with these, um, it just it, I don't know it it just dries in a better way. Like you can use a heat tool and that's fine if you you know if you're in a bit of a rush or something. But I just find if you let it air dry, just let it do its own thing and don't fiddle too much with it, which I can't help myself. So. <laughs> Um, try not to fiddle too much with it, just let it do its thing. So that's what I, that's all I'm going to do, just three colours and because there's some excess liquid on there I am going to move it around just to get it to, so it's not so, um, so you know, so there's not too big a puddles if you like and um, I'm just going to let that dry. So once it was dry, I decided to take some Bombay India ink, and this is this is cool ink. This is fab. This stuff is like um, like when when it's wet, you can watercolor with it. When it dries, it's permanent. It will not move, and it's so so cool. So ideally, you're supposed to use it as like a calligraphy kind of ink, I think, like a writing ink, um, from what I understand. I've made them into sprays. I've used it for this kind of thing, which I'm just splattering on here. Um, and like I say, when it's dry, it's permanent. So it makes good splatter. Um, I've just got like a little fan brush that I'm just using for this and just tapping it. Um, and then I didn't have another fan brush, so I just used a normal paintbrush, a little, a small one, and just splatter all over it. And um, yeah, like I say, it just, it's such cool ink to work with. Um, I don't work with it enough, to be fair, um, and I probably should do more with it, but it's a nice ink to work with. So I just got some splatter on there. And now I've got my, let me try and get the, <laughs> the sizing right. I took a piece of A4 paper and I cut it to seven and a half, no, to seven, and the width is is automatically eight and a quarter. So it measures eight and a quarter by three and a half once you've folded it, um, scored and folded it in half. The same as my watercolor piece that I, I'm gonna stick to the front of it. Um, the thing I would say though, is when you're watercoloring, your paper will warp. So, and mine did quite badly. So I'm wet adhesive to adhere this is probably would have been a better option and I do actually go back afterwards and add some where it lifts off the paper because it's warped it's gonna um, not want to stay flat so there's different ways you can you can flatten those things out you can put them under heavy books and things like that um, I've just seen a video on Tim Holtz where he actually suggests putting um, he's obviously talking about the the um, uh, his distressing that he's sort of, you know, the, the, what am I trying to say, the backgrounds that he's made. Um, and he actually uses it through a mink machine, the Heidi Swap mink, where I think there's like a, I don't have one, but I think there's like a, almost like a, a plasticky sheet that you can put your pages or your pieces inside um, and it just flattens it. It's basically like a laminator. So if you can work that one out without actually, where you can put it between some paper, that might work too. Um, heavy books work <laughs> as well. So I 
I didn't tell you about my images. My images come from a few different um, cricket, that's the word, cartridges. Um, and I just looked for all the pump uh, pumpkins, <laughs> they're not pumpkins at all, um, for all the cupcakes. So I have a couple of them from um, Simply Charmed. I have a couple of them from Once Upon a Princess. And then I have one that is from Creative Critter. And I just looked for all the ones that sort of I thought would work quite well with this card. Now, believe it or not, they are all pretty much the same size and yet they all look so different. <laughs> so this was quite a, a challenge. And also I actually could have made them smaller um, and they would have probably, from a perspective point of view, would have worked a bit better on the card and you would have seen more of the watercolor, but I'm still happy with it. I think it's such a cute card and it's got some lovely sort of pinks and purples and yellows that work really well with, you know, any little girl would love that. Um, or anybody who's just a fan of cupcakes would probably love this, you know, and it, it turned out that they were so big that I actually can't get my sentiment on here. So, <laughs> and this is very unusual because I always put my sentiment on the outside of my cards. I just feel like it makes it work better when there's a sentiment on the outside or something like that on the outside. Um, but you actually don't have to. So I kind of had to let this one go <laughs> and be okay that there wasn't a sentiment on this card at all. <laughs> what I could have done is actually taken the um, taken the sentiment and if I'd taken the foam off, it's actually in the top right hand side there, if I'd taken the foam off, I probably could have. So yeah, so I um, my sentiment I could have easily put on the inside, but I didn't think that quick enough <laughs> when I was making this. So now I'm just going to um, add some sparkle and some shine to all these different elements. So what I'm going to use is some Nouveau Crystal, no, Glitter Drops, <laughs> I never get this right, um, in White Blizzard, which is like a clear sparkly, um, which is really nice if you if you if you're new to them and you don't know what color to get, get sort of the neutral colors. It works really well for most projects, if not all of them. And then I've got some glossy accents. So I'm going to just accent some of the, um, like the cherries and, and some of the cheeks, I think. I can't remember if I do some cheeks. <laughs> no, I think I do a mouth, a couple of mouths, uh, like you do. Um, and then I'm actually going to pull out a um, Sakura I think it's just a black glaze pen. I don't know if it has like a name other than other than the fact that it's a black glaze pen. And um, it is just that, it's just a glaze pen. And it just adds a little bit of something, um, you know, and, and bit of dimension, but not heaps of dimension or anything and shine to, um, to certain elements. So I'll often use this on, um, if I, <laughs> actually I say often, <laughs> if I remember, on um, like, stamped images like the little eyes and things like that it just brings them out sort of brings them to life if you like so I'm just going to add these in where I can some of these pieces on these um, die cut piece uh, images are sort of pieces that you stick on whereas some of them are layers so there's a few of them where it's kind of like the top layer the black is sort of behind all those layers so you have to kind of go inside so some of them were so small I didn't actually bother with the the glaze pen because I couldn't actually get the pen in there it was too too big to go in there but that's okay um, I think there's enough sparkle going on oh yeah and I forgot I had a I used a gold on the flame um, it's also a glitter nouveau uh, let me find out what that one is that one is honey gold was the one I used on the flame as well so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm quite, I'm loving the the whole uh, slimline cards because there's so much more you can do with them. Like there's so much more real estate to be able to make, you know, especially if you're doing scenery cards to make, you know, to spread your scenery out and sort of give more. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just more real estate. You can do more on it. <laughs> so, um, so I hope you enjoyed this and. Um, I hope you give this sort of thing a go. Um, Watercoloring is super cool to do. Um, and it just gives you that lovely texture 
that's just in the background the colors I don't know how I managed it but the colors just work so well together and like I say the cardstock is got nothing to do with the paint so they're not the same brand they're not the same companies they're not nothing to do with each other and yet I managed to get them to work together so just whatever you've got try and and, and do things like this and just try and mix mix and match all your products um, you'll be surprised what matches and what works together so I hope you enjoyed this guys and I will see you in the next one bye